Good evening, everyone. We begin the Triduum, right, this most sacred time of the year, the holiest of weeks, uh, with today, Holy Thursday. And we begin Holy Thursday by hearing from our gospel, whereas the Last Supper, the time for Jesus' passion, approaches, we hear how Jesus chooses to wash the disciples' feet. Now, maybe for some of us, as we hear of this act of, of Jesus, what Jesus does, that we think that um, perhaps simply it's a, a lesson in service. Now, yes, it is that, but it's also so much more. Really, this act of Jesus contains within it, right, a revelation of the love of God. Really, a revelation of, of who God is. How so? Let's take a few moments to break it open. One, we have to understand that to wash uh, uh, the feet of another in this first century Judaism really was a task belonging to that of a slave, of a servant. And so we hear that Jesus, right, um, takes on this very humble approach. And yet this is meant to echo as well what we hear in the letter, St. Paul's letter to the Philippians. I quote, and this is referencing Jesus. Jesus, who though he was in the form of God, did not redeem, did not regard equality with God, something to be grasped. Rather, he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, coming in human likeness, and found human in appearance. He humbled himself, becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. Pope Benedict XVI mentions that this washing of the feet, of Jesus washing the feet of the disciples, represents the whole saving ministry of Jesus in one symbolic act. Because as we heard in Philippians, God is beginning to empty himself. So much so that uh, as we hear in Philippians, he did not regard, regard equality with God something to be grasped. But he emptied himself, taking even the form of a slave. Again, here we see Jesus doing the, the action of a slave in washing the feet. But also we hear that this self-emptying of Jesus, of God, continues, right? Because it's going to go on to death on a cross. And then it doesn't stop even there as well. It continues as well with the sacraments God gives to us in the Eucharist, right, in the priesthood, etc. And what we see here, again, in the self-emptying of God, that God holds nothing back but humbles himself to the point of being a servant and even more so to giving up his life for us, it shows us God's love. It shows us the lengths that God is willing to take in order to save us. It shows us how far God is willing to go to unite us to himself, have a relationship with us. That yes, he goes down, right, to forgive us our sins, but even so much so to take upon himself the death of a criminal on the cross. And we see that Jesus, again, does this knowing fully well, of, uh, well aware of who he is. Right, the gospel says that during supper, fully aware the Father had put everything into his power and that he had come from God and was returning to God. He rose from supper and took off his outer garments. And it continues on. Jesus, knowing who he was, nonetheless emptied himself of the form of slave and continue on it to show us the love he has for us. Now, when we see this love, there's a question that comes then uh, that all of us should reflect on, you and I. And that if this is who God reveals himself to be, one who holds nothing back for us, who empties himself out for us, though we do not deserve it, what does that mean about you and I? Who are we then in light of this love? What does it mean? It means then that we are someone worthy of dying for. We are someone worthy of this love according to God. We are someone God is willing to empty himself out so much so, right? He's doing all of these things that we don't deserve to show us who we are to him. And when we understand just that love and really enters into the depths of our heart, begins to increase our capacity to love. It increases our capacity to live out the Christian life. 
Some of us know the second greatest commandment that we hear, which is love your neighbor as yourself. If we know how loved we are, who we are in God's eyes, we have a greater capacity to love our neighbor. And so to put that in another way, do we love ourselves as God loves us? Do we love ourselves as God does? In order to know this question, we have to experience and see the love, that the great extent and lengths God goes to love us. But when we do receive that love, how much more so are we capable of loving our neighbor? So do we love ourselves as God loves us? But then we see that in love, in this action of Jesus shows us how to love, which is always uh, from the foundation of humility. To love and to grow in love and grow as Christ does, to love as Christ does, we have to love from humility. In other words, we have to see in others someone whom God loves deeply. Someone whom God is willing to empty himself out in such a way on the cross. Just like Jesus, we're meant to place ourselves in the second place according to them in respect to our neighbor. Not treat them as charity projects, but rather seen in them the beauty of God's love. Seen in them an image and likeness of God. And this comes, again, when we ourselves know who we are in light of God's love for us. And so the invitation today, as we uh, begin this Holy Week, this Triduum, especially as we prepare those who receive communion, to receive communion, is to ask God to reveal to you who you are to him. Ask God once again, say, God, show, reveal to me your love. Because it's only from there that we can live out and grow in our capacity to love as the Lord does and we'll see tomorrow.